My friends, could one possibly explain the 4,000-year history of Western garden design in 10 minutes? I'm going to try. You can be the judge. The first cities and the first gardens known to history were made in Mesopotamia. The Sumerian word sar is translated as orchard, garden or palm grove. So this pictogram showing trees and an enclosure is perhaps the earliest representation of a garden. From texts and from archaeology, it's known that the Mesopotamians made orchard gardens, temple gardens and palaces with courtyards. But no plans survive. The only pointers to their design come from gardens made at a much later date. Horticultural and agricultural skills spread from Mesopotamia to Egypt. This is where the world's oldest surviving garden plans were drawn. Like the Assyrians and Babylonians, the Egyptians made horticultural gardens, temple gardens and palace gardens. The art of making gardens spread west from the Fertile Crescent and the first gardens in mainland Europe were made in Greece. They were of the same three types as in West Asia. Small courtyard houses were the norm in Greece. The courtyards were used for cooking and living and they may have contained some ornamental plants. We don't know. Greek religious sanctuaries, made to honour gods and seek their help, are thought to have been sacred places before they were furnished with temples and, probably, ornamental plants. Greek horticultural plots outside towns were used to grow food and flowers and olives. In Rome, the historic garden design objectives came together in small town gardens and on great estates. Rich men's townhouses had three types of courtyard. An atrium, used for domestic life and collecting rainwater, as had been done in Greek courtyards. A peristyle court, with a family shrine, statues and flowering plants. A hortus, used for growing the family's fruit and vegetables. Outside towns, emperors and nobles made large villas with the same three types of space, domestic, spiritual and horticultural. Outside country villas, the Romans set aside land for hunting, as was done all round the fringes of Central Asia. The art of making private gardens travelled to North and West Europe with Rome's armies. Governors and landowners made villa gardens of the kind their families had enjoyed in Italy. Villa comes from the same root as village and their estates were small settlements, not unlike the medieval manors which followed them. The gardens of the Middle Ages were of four types. Castles had herbers within and near their fortifications. A herber was a small outdoor room for ladies, music, flowers and romance. Castles also had extensive vegetable gardens and orchards outside their walls. Manor houses had large gardens, but their main use was to grow food. Monasteries had cloister garths near their dormitories and refectories, with vegetable gardens outside the monastery. They're unlikely to have had pleasure gardens before the Renaissance, but they did grow flowers and herbs, probably among the vegetables. In towns, Wealthy merchants had gardens, mainly for vegetables, but perhaps with some herbotype spaces like those in castles. 
early Renaissance gardens were made outside castles and fortified manor houses. Life was becoming safer and newly wealthy families could live outside fortifications where there was space for fruit, vegetables, flowers, gravel walks and statues. High Renaissance gardens were larger than their predecessors and designed as geometrical extensions of grand villas. Axes, sculpture collections and views became important. Mannerist gardens were even more elaborate. They had lavish water features and cross axes projecting to views within and outside garden walls. Early Baroque gardens continued the projection of axes out into the surrounding landscape and around Rome, often focusing on the dome of St Peter's Basilica. High Baroque gardens, particularly in North Europe, had a profusion of avenues, often radiating from their owners' bedrooms. Versailles is the largest and most famous example. Forest-style gardens, also with avenues projecting into views, were a stage in a progression to a more relaxed design style, intended for rural retirement, rather than for the glitter of courtly life. Augustan-style gardens were inspired by paintings of classical landscapes and literature from the time of the Emperor Augustus, seen as a golden age. Serpentine style is the name I favour for the style of Lancelot Capability Brown. It can also be called, with less precision, the naturalistic or landscape style. Its characteristic features are serpentine lakes, serpentine tree belts and serpentine paths. That's why I think serpentine's a good name for the style. Picturesque gardens with jagged lines and highly irregular plans became fashionable at the end of the 18th century. Their popularity grew from the work of William Gilpin, Sir Oofdale Price and Richard Perry The gardenesque style, as promoted by John Claudius Loudon, used picturesque layouts with exotic plants, so that the gardens could be recognisable as works of art and not confused with wild nature. The landscape style was based on the idea of creating a transition from a geometrical foreground through a serpentine middle ground to a wildly irregular background. The owner could then enjoy scenes which were beautiful, picturesque or sublime. The mix style aimed to assemble plant material, styles and design ideas from all over the world. The principle was romantic and the results were eclectic. As Humphrey Repton argued, there is no more absurdity in collecting styles in a garden than collecting books in a library or pictures in a gallery. Arts and crafts designers, towards the end of the 19th century, sought to rescue gardens from eclecticism by rooting design in excellent craftsmanship and the principles of art. The abstract style developed from the arts and crafts movement, but using the principles of abstract art and the new crafts of working with steel, concrete, glass and other modern materials. The post-abstract style, also called postmodern, aims to go beyond abstract gardens by adding something more. It's often a second design code 
drawn from science, history, literature, sustainability theory, or whatever else has taken the designer's fancy. How long did that take? Gardenvisit.com has been providing information on garden design, garden history and garden tours since 1999.